Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Jay Padilla and welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you guys through a step-by-step -step process to coloring and shading your art in Clip Studio Paint to get that anime style look. So in this video, I'm going to be drawing the GOAT himself, Fire Lord Zuko from the greatest TV show in history, Avatar The Last Airbender. Fight me. So let's jump right to it. So what I'm going to show you guys is a process that I take when I approach coloring one of my drawings and some of these steps can be interchangeable so you don't have to follow everything I do to a T. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to lay down my flats on their own separate layer. And since I have a reference for adult Zuko, I know the colors that he wears so it's easier for me to choose the colors for him. And I will eventually do a video on picking color schemes for character designs and color theory. So if you're interested in that, please do leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. So as we got your flats down, what I like to do is organize my folders into different categories. So I have a whole folder for my sketch art, my flats, my shadows, and my highlights, and my line art. Once that's done, I like to create a layer mask for my drawing. So what a layer mask is, for those of you that don't know, is once you select your drawing and you apply a mask to it. If you're drawing your colors or your shadows or your highlights, those colors cannot go outside of the, the mask. So it becomes a lot easier for you to do your coloring and fill in your shadows and your highlights as you go on. So to make a mask, what you want to do is uh, you want to select everything outside of your drawing. And then once you do that, go up to the selection toolbar. It should be at the top left of your screen. And you want to click that selection toolbar then you want to go down to where it says invert selection then after you invert the selection you can go and you can increase the radius of the selection so i usually increase it by one and then you'll go over back to the layer mode and then you will see a little icon that's a square icon with a circle inside of it you will choose the layer that you want the mask to apply to and then you'll click that icon and then your mouse will then apply so once the mask has been applied, I select it by clicking on the mask layer while holding the control key, which will then select my entire mask so I can make my tone layer. So what the tone layer is, is whatever environment your character is in, be it a sunny beach or a snowy mountain or a swamp, their environment will create what is called ambient light, which affects everything in its proximity. So since Zuko will have fire coming off his blades, I chose a warm orangeish yellow light for the tone of his character. Once I've created the tone layer, I go to the layer blending mode and make it a linear burn mode. And you can use the multiply layer uh, as well if you like to, but for me, I just like the effect that linear burn has on the colors and the shading, which I will show you at the end of this video. So after I create that, I, then I select that same tone layer and duplicate it and put it right above the original tone layer. And then I use the control key again to click on that layer and then delete all the color fields that are in that new duplicated layer. And this will be, no, will be my shadow layer. Now, sometimes you can use the color from your tone layer as a color for your shadows. But for this drawing, I want a nice contrast between the tone of the scene and the shadows on the character. And I did not just come to this conclusion naturally because I still need more learning and practice when it comes to lighting. So I looked up and studied reference images for the drawing. Now, did I use the same lighting that was used in the reference, but I did use it to help guide me to make this drawing more appealing, at least to me. So for the shadow color, I used a deep blue to complement the warm orangeish yellow of the tone. And once I've chosen my shadow color, I start creating the guidelines for how I want my shadows to go based on the lighting setup of the drawing. Now you can place your shadows with or without your flat layer, your flat layer visible. I like to do it when they are turned off because it makes it easier for me to focus on the lighting I want without worrying about the color. Once the guys have been placed, I then use the selection tool to select all the areas that the shadows would be occurring and expand the selection by one so that the edge, so that the colors meet the edge of the drawing and we won't have any strange pixely cutoffs. And from there, I just mess around with the shadows until I reach a point where I'm happy with how the piece looks. So I'm going to jump into the time lapse real quick and finish up these sh shadows, then we'll get into doing the highlights.
So when it comes to highlights, this is where you can have a little fun because for certain areas, depending on the material or the texture of where you're placing highlights on it, it will not all react the same to the environment that it's in. So you can use whatever color you see fit for the highlights in your drawing. And once I finish placing the highlights where I want them to be, I then go to the layer blending modes again and use the hard light blending mode. And for each layer from the tone, shadows, highlights, you will want to play with the opacity of the layer to get the desired effect you're looking for. And once the shadows and highlights are done, I just add in the last few touches to really make the drawing stand out. Then I'm done. So I'm going to jump back into time lapse again and see you guys at the end. After I finish the shadows and highlights, I like to group the shadows into their own separate folder because it makes it really cool. It makes a really cool effect with the tones and shadows uh, when you have it on linear burn. And once you do that, you can you can go back to how you previously had it if, if you still want to group together your shading layers just by clicking on the folder and either pressing the through blending mode or the linear burn blending mode. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, and if you learned something, please do leave a like and comment down below. If you like this content and want to see me do more videos, could do consider subscribing. If you have any video ideas you would like to see me do in the future, then please do let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time.